Hi, everybody. Welcome to Europe, uh, DD Europe 2021. Um, I'm Andrew Harmel Law. I'm a tech principal at ThoughtWorks. Um, and I'm going to spend the next five and a half minutes, hopefully, talking about patterns and their relationship with people. Um, so we all know the idea of patterns doesn't come from software, or most of us maybe know, right? Um, it comes from real world architecture. And the the kind of the main book in this area is a 1977 book called A Pattern Language by Alexander et al. So a bunch of other people as well, just not not just Christopher Alexander. It's a thick book if you've seen it. There's a lot in it. It's also very esoteric. Um, and while it definitely didn't catch on very much in the world of architecture, the patterns concept became very popular in our world, the world of software delivery. So for me, and I guess for lots of people here, although maybe not everyone. Software Patterns started for us with the Gang of Fours book in 1994 called Design Patterns. And in their introduction, they credit Alexander. So um, as they say, what Alexander says is true also about software design patterns. At the core of both kinds of patterns is a solution to a problem in context. Two years later, after this, uh, came the, uh, in 1996, came volume one of Bushman et al's pattern-oriented software architecture. So there's lots of volumes, but this is the first one. It's a lot less well known. I uh, haven't read half of it at all, um, but it's significantly wider range and there's multiple volumes for starters. Like the Gang of Four, they also have design patterns, but they also have larger scale architectural patterns. So that's where things like Model View Controller, layers uh, um, pop up, but also now more well known things like pipes and filters. So they, you know, they were identified and known about way back then. But there's two other similarities with Alexander which are worth calling out. Firstly, Bushman et al. have a whole chapter about the patterns community, the community of people that shared the patterns which had solved their problems, the community of people who were strongly and originally inspired by Alexander. And the, I can't list the names here, but they're, they're names that we all recognize in the world of software. The second similarity, I think, is even more significant. Bushman et al. were well aware that Alexander and the company didn't just compile a pattern catalog. They crafted a pattern language. Bushman et al. retool this into a system but they placed the term as Alexander did in their title of their book. And they explained why. Patterns do not exist in isolation, they said. There are many interdependencies between them. A plain catalog like list of patterns does not reflect this. Patterns should be woven into pattern systems. So our history jumps forward a little bit. There's other important kind of works, but we're, for the sake of five minutes, we're gonna go quickly. So now we're at the early 2000s. Appetite for patterns has increased dramatically. Everybody started talking about patterns and anti-patterns, and that you know they're they're kind of the standard thing that most people have in books. But the key text next one is is Martin Fowler's uh, 2002 Patterns of Enterprise Architecture. Here, layers um, reflecting the time had come to primacy and served mainly for some aspects as the structure for the book itself. And then there were other two core patterns which were retooled and kind of reintroduced, and many many more were added. And the year after that, in 2003, Hopi and Wolf released uh, enterprise integration patterns. They also kind of re, uh, reflected and represented from uh, an updated times classic, such as broker and pipes and filters. But again, they added lots more patterns themselves. And both books credit Alexander and Co. But the system aspect of, of how things are presented is slowly beginning to fade into the background. Another four years passed, DevOps arises, patterns mutate yet again. So in 2007, Michael Nygaard brings out Release It. 2012, uh, Wilders comes out with uh, Cloud Architecture Patterns. And in 2019, Davies, the first kind of lead author is a woman, releases Cloud Native Patterns. Yet again, each of these distills from the experiences of many and packages up the experience into a pattern for the benefit of everyone. But we can also see a new trend emerging. The software pattern or the patterns now had an extra focus on deploying and running systems, not just building them. The needs of people being served by all patterns was making its way back into uh, into the story. So the next one in 2019 and the one that brings us right up to date is Skelton and Pais's team topologies. And it's the natural evolution of this trend and brings us right up to date. It doesn't use the standard pattern format, but it is a pattern book. It speaks at length and in detail about various problems in software delivery ones attributable to team structures, and then describes how to remedy them. Here, the patterns are all about people. But wait, I've skipped something. What about the reason that we're all here? Because back in 2003, Eric released Domain Driven Design. The reason I skipped it is because it doesn't completely fit. 
While the people focus of patterns was disappearing into uh, the background in the other books at the time, here it's front and center. And I'm rereading the book at the moment. And the, 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 the constant repeating of the, of the human beings in the center of all this is very core. It's there in every single pattern. Well, everyone else was becoming, uh, everything else was becoming a simpler catalog. Domain-driven design is clearly a system, a system with patterns at many distinct levels and a clear approach tying them all together. There's even chapters on how to do this. For a long, long time, these core elements, I think, weren't talked about enough. But now, I think today, as a community, we're beginning to remedy this. So why is now so significant? Well, rereading a pattern, or reading, sorry, for the first time, a pattern language as a software developer, two aspects stand out. Firstly, the number of patterns which are human-centric at the large and small scale. Despite what Eric gave us in 2003, we spent half of our journey moving away from what Alexander envisioned. But now, thanks to DevOps, the direction of travel, I think, is clearly converging again. And I guess we'll all spend a lot of the next few days talking about this. And what about the future? Well, the second standout from uh, Alexander is his composition of patterns into a language, something which we in the technical world feel more comfortable describing as a system. One which ranges from the large scale to the small. I think this is still further away, but if you look and listen, you'll see the beginnings of this too. You can see this in the efforts of the DDD and DevOps communities, not just here at DDD Europe, but also in other places. New connections are being made and others being strengthened. And I'm excited to see this becoming stronger and stronger, and I'm hoping to participate in it. I hope you will too. Here at DDD Europe, at the open spaces and listening to the, and working in the workshops and beyond. Because if we do, then perhaps we can sustainably build more deliverable, maintainable, runnable, supple, cost-effective, dare I even say it, joyful software. So hopefully you'll enjoy the conference. And if you do want to chat about this more, as uh, Matthias said, please um, uh, ask me a question on chat at the conference because I'll be here for the whole time. Or you can uh, tweet at me directly at uh, AL94781. And uh, thanks very much for listening.